town to town Set them up, I'll knock them down Another dream, another round we go I don't know which road to take Holding on for heaven's sake Looking for the words to say to go And I feel the push and pull Taste the flesh, lose your soul I think that I'm just let go Lean into the fire What's going on? Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Happy Wednesday. We got Norm, Josh, Abe, Rocks in the infield, Ryan Maldonado, King Leo, King Leon, the King Leon bassist, had a side project band with the lead singer of this band, Mona. So take that, King Leo. Thanks for tuning in. Good morning to you. Kyle's in Periscope, not Mr. Moon's in Periscope. Someone asked how my brother Luke's doing. He just woke up. He'll probably be in here in the background changing and getting ready for work at some point. Uh, Facebook, I saw someone from the UK, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Awesome. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the morning show. Bite-sized bits of everything I enjoy. American history, American geography, books, baseball, music coffee. I was late today to the show. When I do it from my house, I like to do it at 8.30. If I do it from the office, probably going to do it at 9 a.m. Um, I don't know how I can communicate that to you guys. I don't know if I can, but that's going to the plan. But today we were out of coffee, so I had to run to the bodega, buy coffee. We poured it into a mug, so I look professional. Don't even worry about it. It's fucking really hot. It's really hot. But anyway. Hope everyone's doing splendid. We got some good good little rabbit holes today. Actually, I got to just speed through to get to the town because I'm excited. Here's what we got coming up today. We got Talking Baseball, the number one labor dispute pod in all the land. Me, Trev, and Jake just hammered out everything that's going on in baseball right now. Tried to talk it. I had to give you a little hint. Trev's not happy. Trev's mad. Trev's coming at people. Not into it. Uh, John Boy and Jake Radio will be live at 10 o'clock after this. I'll get a drive to the office. We'll sit down and we'll talk about that. Some big news. Chris D'Elia stuff's crazy. Probably going to talk about that there. Not talk about that here. The last watching baseball. Uh, watching baseball is suspended indefinitely from the from the program. So this is the last watching baseball. We, we watched the 2019 uh, National League wildcard game. The, uh, you know, Brewers. Uh, Brewers, Nats, Soto versus Hater, the error, all that shit. And talking sports, I, I I haven't kept up to date with all my graphics, so I don't even know if talking sports came out today. I need to do a better job of keeping up, but I make the new episodes out today graphic. And if people go off schedule, I don't know what to do. But there is no, it came out Sunday. Okay. Well, there's one out there. Go listen to Talking Sports. Whoa. Phone's playing audio as I'm talking. Interesting. Um, all right. So that's that. And then we're going to quickly move on to the town because I'm excited to talk about this town. I, I bet a lot of people know about this already, but I didn't. So don't be ashamed if you didn't because I didn't. And it's awesome. Little Diomede Island. It's 37 degrees, partly cloudy. No one living on Little Diomede Island is listening to this or tuning in, so it's a wasted weather report because you're not listening because you don't have internet because you live on a remote island in the middle of the ocean, and it's rather fascinating, in my opinion. So Little Diomede Island is right next to Big Diomede Island. Little Diomede Island... This is where I am. Oh, you can't even see it. Little Diomede Island is part of the U.S. Big Diomede Island is part of Russia. They're separated by about a mile and a half, less than two miles. But more interesting. Okay, so this 
is America. This is Russia. More interesting, not only is this the border, but the time zone line, whatever the fuck it's called, goes here as well. So this big diamede is, I believe it's 20 hours, 21 hours, is 21 hours ahead of Little Diomede Island. So when it's noon in America, here, it's nine in the morning, a mile away, here. Come on. Come on, guys. That's crazy cool. Can't throw that at me and not expect me to be excited about it. Um, nuts. So, all right, I, I, I did a lot of watching and reading. I went down the rabbit hole. Uh, Big Diomede is almost a day ahead of Little Diomede. We already talked about that. The islands are sometimes called Tomorrow Island and Yesterday Island. That's kind of cute. I like that. During winter, an ice bridge usually spans the distance between the two islands. Therefore, during such times, it is thero... thero whatever. It's possible to walk from island to island, but that's not legal because it's United States to Russia. You know, imagine if they just had like a winter um, border patrol, like in like an ice hut, just one dude. Everyone that walked through had to stop at his hut, couldn't dodge him, and he had to check your passport. That'd be a shitty job. Um, You can't get to Little Diomede Island, but except by helicopter or when it when when the whole shit freezes, you can go from. Wales, Lop Lagoon. That's a cool name. Uh, so you can walk it or drive it or whatever. I watched a YouTube video. He clearly did like a better job because he was like not off the cuff and researched. And he said from Nome, Alaska, a helicopter flies every day to just deliver these people their mail or, or once a week to deliver them mail. And just crazy. They want to build a, they've, they've talked about a bridge going from Russia to Alaska over these islands, kind of like the Bay Bridge. A tunnel? Luke, producer Luke says a tunnel, but I, I read a bridge. How far away is the Bay Bridge? Because the Bay Bridge has treasure, treasure Island in the middle. So this would be like little Diomede and Treasure Island would be big Diomede. Yerba Buena's little, Treasure Island's big. A bridge, that's kind of the same concept. Pretty much bigger. But then, like, it's only, it's 55 miles. It's a huge bridge. How long's the San Mateo Bridge? Six miles? Nine miles? I don't know. I don't know why I opened up Treasure Island, but you guys know about Treasure Island. This man-made island, tre- this is not what I'm supposed to be talking about today, but I filmed a short film on this island. It's creepy. Um, half of it is still deserted because they did chemical testing after the war. They built Treasure Island in San Francisco for the World's Fair. Uh, like, that's what it was, a man-made island built for the wor- World's Fair. And it's pretty cheap to live there, and you get, like, Free ferry access. Where, where did I film something? There's like a bowling alley that shut down. We filmed. We filmed something. I don't know. All these are where people actually live. Some of these, some of these places are com- like people shoot music videos on Treasure Island because like there's just completely deserted buildings, and there's apartment complexes that. Just uh, have like gone to waste. Like they look like post-apocalyptic shit. I want to say it's right here. Yes. All these buildings. You can see the holes in the window. Okay. Yep. See these stairwells? People have shot music videos here because it just looks, it's like it's deserted building that no one lives in anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of where we were when we shot it. When I say shot it, I mean, I was the star of the short film. (laughs) My classmate in film school, he was writing and directing, and I acted in it. 
If you were to ask me to grade my acting skills, I'd say not good. Uh, you can watch it. Grown Losers on our channel. Anyway, Little Diomede Island. A little back to the main point, Jimmy. Um, Little Diomede Island. So these were obviously inhabited, and Russia owned all of them. Russia owned all of Alaska, too. Which, crazy that that's part of America. Like, crazy that that is part of this country. But I guess that's how it works. After the Civil War, um, what's his name? I wrote this down. After the Civil War, Secretary of whatever. Where is it? I didn't write down his name. But after the Civil War, the U.S. bought all of Alaska for two cents an anchor, $7 million. Russia wanted to sell it because they couldn't protect it anymore from Britain and all that. And the U.S. wanted to expand trade with Asia and kind of set up a point. So they buy Alaska after the Civil War. And they say, well, why don't we just draw the line in between? Because I think it's 25 miles to Little Diomede, 25 miles to Big Diomede. Little Diomede Island, we haven't even got to this, has inhabitants. Russia kicked everyone off Big Diomede and sent them to Russia. So it's just a military base. I don't even know if we can zoom in and see where the base is. It's on the coast somewhere. But Little Diomede has a like a town, has a community. But this this is the entire community. Uh, it's look at that. That's the entire community right there. Uh, here's a better picture. <clears throat> this is where the helicopter lands, right there, and that's where they get their mail from. And this is the whole whole town. Why well, live there? You know, I understand having pride in where you're from and all that, but it saddens me that, like, to to have a little kid there and, like, that's all they know and there's this whole world that has internet, phones and stuff. It seems rude to raise a little kid on Little Diomede Island, but I guess there's tradition and all that shit that people like. But, like, come on. Like, you're, you, li <laughs> you live... Oh, my God. You live on the side of a fucking cliff. In freezing temperatures. With no internet or phone service or anything. Not even really sidewalks. Like, I don't know how you get from town to town. You just sled down the hill, I guess. Here's a guy. Definitely a guy right there. No idea who that is. Oh, here's a better picture of the town. How many houses are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 43. Wow, only 43 houses. Oh, this picture weirded me and producer Luke out. What's going on in... The <laughs> I don't know if this is a... Okay, I don't know if this is a sad picture or... and we and It's a scary picture. But here's all my questions, okay? Here's all my questions. Is this a father and son, and a son doesn't like the sound of gunshots, so he's just, like, kind of hiding? That's, like, the most innocent version of this. And then my question would be, what the fuck is he shooting at in the ocean? Whales? Dolphins? Pirates coming up? The scary part is, is this little kid hiding from that guy? Cause that's terrible and no one wants that. I don't know anything. I need more info on this picture, but it's like just the stock picture for a climate change article. Seems like it seems weird to just have like climate change. Shut up, Nat Geo. I don't want to do any of this. Okay, never mind. I guess we can't read about that article. Never mind. It's out. They got dogs on the island. That's cool. Oh, those are cute little dogs. Let's see these cute little dogs. That's cool. Little Diomede Island's got dogs. We all know that now. Um. Anyway, yeah, I don't really know much else. I think that's all I learned about the, the the islands, but oh yeah, yeah 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 there is some other notes I have okay, 
So here's a better picture taken in complete darkness. The other notes I have, just to make sure I say, during the Cold War, that gap constituted the border between the United States and the Soviet Union and became known as the Ice Curtain. In 1987, however, Lynn Cox swam from one island to the other and was congratulated by both Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan for her feat. So let's Google Lynn Cox and see what her what she's all about lynn cox motivational speaker who is lynn cox okay lynn cox diamede images we don't want to read okay not learning much else about her from the pictures besides she's a swimmer and there was a boat that followed her Oh, she's been swimming a lot of straits. She did the first woman to swim swim the Cook Strait in New Zealand. And these are her friends. Those guys can't swim as well as her. And she loves that. She rubs it in their faces. Um, Her Cold War swim. Cool. Here's her and a sea lion. Here's her. In some waves. More waves. Looks like whenever they do a photo shoot, they know what kind of picture they want with her. Lynn, we're going to put you in some waves. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that's what everyone does. Usually they want me in some waves just saying hi. Easy peasy. Oh, holding up a medal. All right. So that's Lynn Cox. She's the best, I guess. Um, anything else about Little Diamond that I'm forgetting that I looked up? The name origin. Danish navigator Vitus Bring rediscovered the Diamond Islands while leading a Russian expedition on the 16th of August, the day when the Russian Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of the martyr St. Diomede. So, that makes sense. That's like my dad's name Christopher because he was born on Christopher Columbus Day. He was going to be named Daniel. And then they were like, well, yeah, it is Christopher Columbus Day. I wonder how many stories there are like that. Don't name your kid Valentine if, you, if he gets born on Valentine's Day. Just my advice. That's all we got here. All right. We are moving on. Uh, the Diomede Islands, I could, I, I'm, I'm more fascinated. If there's like a documentary about the life of the people on Little Diomede, I'm very interested. There probably is one. I just didn't like watch it or look it up, but... That's the, that's the town today. And that's all I have to say about that. The player of the day is Charlie Jameson, nicknamed Cuckoo. I don't know how prominent of a nickname it was because it just says it was a nickname. And he played in the 20s. And we all know that if he actually went by like Cuckoo Jameson, it would be his baseball reference name. He's from Patterson, New Jersey. So shout out. Second player in a row second random player in a row from new jersey and he's in the uh, cleveland indians hall of fame connie mack traded him from philadelphia to cleveland because the philadelphia athletics were like out of money and didn't want to pay him and he basically was like well i'll go play for federal league or i'll go play for this other league i'm not going to play for you guys if you can't pay me so then connie mack was like all right We'll trade you to Cleveland, and he was like a throw-in, kind of like a, another deal. Traded from Philly to Cleveland on March 1st, 1919. Larry Gardner, Elmer Myers, and Jamison were traded from the A's to the Indians for Brago Roth. Got to look that dude up now. Brago Roth. His birth name can't be Brago, right? Brago Roth. Birth name, Robert Frank Roth. Nickname, The Globetrotter. Fuck, how did he get his nickname? Brago Roth. Looking it up. We'll be quick. Just a quick poke our head in the Brago rabbit hole. Brago Roth, sometimes called Brago, was an often insufferable self-promoter who bounced around among six American League teams in the years surrounding World War I and was on the wrong side of two of the most lopsided trays of the dead ball era. A player with diverse skills 
Roth won a home run title and also stole home as many as six times in a season, but he was hampered by what one source called the unhappy faculty of gaining enemies, apparently with cold deliberation. Sounds like he bragged about himself a lot, so they just called him Brago. That's cool. Adds up. Sounds like no one liked you, Brago. Dick. Anyway, Jameson, Charlie Jameson led the league in plate appearances at bats and hits in 1923. It took him, I'll show you the baseball reference. It took him a long time to get, oh, that's me. That's me. Motherfucker. Uh, it took him a long time to kind of get going in his career. But Connie Mack said, you know, one of the worst trades he ever had, regrets it and all that nonsense. So when he's 22, he's with Washington. He didn't play a lot, uh, a lot of pinch running, all that shit. They traded him as like a waiver wire deal when he was 24 to Philadelphia. We talked about that. He got a lot of play in 1918. They didn't want to pay him a lot, so they traded him to Cleveland. He goes on to have like a, a great run in Cleveland. So the, fir- well, the first year in Cleveland, there was a different manager, and he didn't play him a lot. He only used him as a utility guy. And he, this dude could also pitch. He was Babe Ruth. He was Otani of his day, but not like superstar. Like he could do it. So he did. So Cleveland used him as a pitcher often. They didn't play him a lot. And then the manager leaves. Tris Speaker's like, I'm the new player manager. You're in, my dude. And from there, from when he gets a starting job until before he gets really old, he went, how many seasons is that? He went, oh, I do they, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 10 or 11? I didn't even count right. With a 317 batting average, 389 on base percentage, and a 795 OPS, 105 OPS plus. So he was above average for 10 or 11 years straight. Four years he got MVP voting. In, he's in Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame. So once he finally got his chance to like start every day, dude was pretty good. Dude was pretty good. There's a funny story here about this dude. Um, And by funny, I mean kind of like sad and ironic and not like that funny for everyone that's kind of sensitive. But anyway, he comes back to Yankee Stadium. He's playing at at the polo grounds at the time. And he's from Patterson, New Jersey. So he's got all his friends. All his, all his family, all his relatives come to the game to see him play because he's a you know, local boy coming back. They call it Charlie Jameson Day. We're celebrating Charlie Jamis- Jameson Day. And it was the very game. Oh, because uh, Charlie Jameson also donated a lot of uh, funds and, and money to firemen's widows. So he was kind of like, you know, well-respected here and all that. But it was this game on Charlie Jameson Day at the Polo Grounds when Carl Mays hit Ray Chapman in the, in the head and killed him. And, I mean, that's, uh, you know, Charlie Jameson Day gets ruined pretty quick. You know, it's not really a celebratory day anymore. He said his mom and his sister never attended another game because they were like, that one game you made us come to, you made us watch a guy die. So we're kind of out on baseball. I think that's fair. I think that's, well, you know, he's their son so and the brother. I think it's a little fair. But like, hey, Charlie, remember that game, Charlie Jameson Day? There was a murder. Well, you made us watch it. We didn't enjoy it, so we're done. Not coming to any more games. Who knows what's going to happen next time we show up. They had another Charlie Jameson day when he came back later, so I don't think anyone died on that day, which is good news. Uh, the tidbit I put in the title because I thought it was funny is that Jameson and Ruth, they met in 1914 as opponents in the International League, and they were good friends ever since. And back then, fielders would share share gloves, you know? Like, you just leave your glove in the field, and the, the next, the opposing team comes out and uses the same glove. I never really understood why they did that. They, they weren't, like, that pressed for equipment. It, it, it never, ever seemed necessary. It seemed like one of those things where it happened, and the first guy to be like, Nah, this is my glove. You just use your your own, and we don't have to share in the field anymore. Like, that shouldn't have been that revolutionary. should have been like, yeah, duh. Okay. Anyway, Jameson and Ruth used to play pranks on each other and, like, put blades, stuff the glove with blades of grass or peanut shells and then leave it in the field, which I'm guessing happened a lot. I mean, if you're sharing a glove with a dude in the outfield, A, 
That can be pretty gross. Dude's got a sweaty hand. B, got to play pranks. Almost have to. Like, untie the webbing. They didn't have webbing. They were like oven mitts. Untie the, the webbing. Leave it on the field. That dude's got to tie it up. Balls hit to him. Gloves they have tied. A lot of fun can be had with sharing equipment. Trick glove. Shoot a hole through the middle. Um, yeah, but it says that him and Babe remained great friends. Even off the field, they would always go drinking together and shit like that. And that's crazy. Babe Ruth didn't even know a lot of his teammates' names. There's a story that, like, a relief pitcher that was with the Yankees for, like, five years tapped Babe and introduced himself. And Babe just said, oh, nice. Glad to have you on the team. <laughs> It's like, I've been your teammate for five years, babe. Didn't care. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Charles. See, he was a pitcher, too. And he faced Babe Ruth in his. Oh, they don't have any of these. He's too old. I am near, not even seeing what I'm looking at. I was trying to look at his game logs as a pitcher. But it looks like they don't. Oh, wait. Okay. His first ever start as a pitcher when he was with Washington came against the Yankees. So we'll do a quick nickname check and and, and see how he did or who he faced and all that shit. Um, let me fix this so it's better for you. We got... Joe, Carl, Mike, Elmer, Sam, Howie, Joe, Eddie, Joe Judge, Washington Senators, uh, Eddie, and then Eddie pinch ran, pinch hit for Eddie, Doc, and Charlie. So I'm guessing Doc's a nickname, and Howie is probably just Howard. So that, oh, yeah, Howard, and also went by Hawk, Howie the Hawk, obviously. Whoa, Doc Ayer's full name was Yancey. Yancey. Yancey Ayers. Ayers? That's a bad name. Yancey. Never heard that one. He is buried in Grantham Cemetery in Draper, Virginia, for everyone that wants to go look and pay their respects to Doc Ayers. His name was Yancey. Why did so many... Why did so many... Players get the nickname Doc. Obviously, we know that back in these times, if you were a lefty, you were going to go by lefty. A majority. If you were a redhead, you were going to go by red. But there's a lot of Docs. Doc Johnston. Um, okay. Here it is. Because of his stint. Uh, it's right here. Because of his stint in medical school, the nickname Doc stuck with him. That'll do it. Pretty simple. Okay, where were we? So this is his debut game. A lot of moving shit around. Hang with me. We had two Elmers? Wow, on the Nash on the Washington Senators, we had Elmer Smith. And then on the Yankees, we had Elmer Miller. Two Elmers in the same game. Hugh High. Whoa, what a weird name. First name's Hugh, last name's High. Just the difference is the U and the I. H-U-G-H-H-I-G-H. Hugh High. I mean, that's weird. It's like a joke name. Full name, Hugh Jenkin High. Nickname, Bunny. Brothers of Charlie High and Andy High. Wow. Wow. They both played. Hugh High. Doesn't even flow. Doesn't even, doesn't, sometimes names like that can be good. We got Roger Peckinpow, Wally Pip, Home Run Baker. Are you kidding me? The fact, baseball reference has this dude's name as Home Run. John Franklin Baker. I mean, a Hall of Famer. Uh, he actually played with, well, he obviously played with Charlie Jameson. That's what we're looking at. But uh, Home Run Baker. That's what baseball reference has it as. Tim Hendricks, Joe, Walt, and Urban Shocker. Everyone's favorite. Some good nicknames. Not a lot of nicknames. Two Elmers, though. Which Elmer do you think did better? So Elmer Smith went one for four. Elmer Miller 
went two for four with two RBIs and two runs. So Elmer Miller wins the battle there. Should we quickly find the best Elmer in all of baseball? Oh, there's so many. Oh, no. There's so many Elmers. Wait, maybe there's not. No, there is. There's a lot. How do they sort it? By war? Is Elmer Flick the best? Let's do a a, a quick Elmer, Elmer search. Elmer Riddle, Elmer Singleton, Elmer White, Elmer Jacobs, Elmer Myers. Those are all the Elmers we're going to check out. And we're gonna, just going to see 53 war. Do they offer it in war? 28, 11, 13. Okay, they do. Cool. Easy. Thanks, baseball reference. So the best Elmer, which, you know, everyone's fucking on the edge of their seat, is Elmer Flick. He's a Hall of Famer. He won a batting title. His name is Elmer Harrison Flick. And he is buried at Crown Hill Cemetery in Twinsburg, Ohio. So go check him out. He led the league in batting average in 1905. Led the league in OPS Plus in 1905. Led the league in a lot of shit, a lot of counting stats the year before. He was a triples guy. How about that? Best Elmer in all of baseball. Where were we? Do we have anything left on Charlie Jameson? Um, yeah, we do, Jimmy. Never mind. I was trying to see who he faced in his debut. We don't know. All we know is that he came in in relief and pitched the 6th, uh, 7th, 8th, and ninth inning, allowed two earned runs, faced 18 batters. So, you know, you're guessing that he faced, I mean, this is the Yankees before Babe Ruth, so he faced home run Baker. How about home run Baker being around and then fucking Babe Ruth comes up after him and all the public's like, well, shit, we already gave the nickname home run to Baker when Babe deserves it. We done fucked that up. I'm guessing that's what happened there. They had a big realization. They're like, we blew this. This was terrible. Anyway, that's Charlie Cuckoo Jameson. And that's all I have to say about that. The book of the day is, and I just grabbed this one, The Spectacular Now. It's a movie. A lot of people maybe have seen the movie with, um, what's his face? What is it? Miles Teller, Spectacular Now. Miles Teller and the girl that I know her name and I'm blanking on it. Shailene Woodley, Brie Larson's in it. Kyle Chandler's in it. In it. A lot of people are in the movie. The movie is a little different than the book. I have the book right here. It's got a lot of coffee stains on it. I went through a phase of reading young adult books a lot. Uh, we actually on John Boy and Jake Radio yesterday we were looking at our old Amazon purchases because you can see like ten years back. Be like I could see like what I ordered in 2010. And I could see where I ordered like Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, The Spectacular Now, It's Kind of a Funny Story, Perks of Being a Wallflower, and some other young adult books because I was trying to write one at the time for fun and I was just reading a bunch to see. And I liked this book and I didn't like it. And I liked the movie and the movie's different than the book and I like some things about the movie better. It's, uh, it's uh, like a fuck up in high school who drinks a lot. He's got his dad's not around ever. And his mom's kind of like a bad mom. And he meets this nerdy girl who kind of changes his life. And he's like, what's this? There's a piece of paper in here. Kind of gets his act together. Kind of for her. It's a sticker on this page. Um, unreliable narrator. Cause he's drunk or buzzed the whole time. The only thing I didn't like about this book. And I don't know if anyone else has read it is that Tim Tharp, he writes the dialogue very much like uh, that gif of Steve Buscemi when he puts the skateboard over his shoulder and he's like, well, I don't even know the quote. It says something like, how are you young kids? What's that meme? That's what it seemed like. It was like, dude, I don't think kids talk like that, Tim. You're, you're making them say all this weird dialogue. Uh like all these weird, like catchy phrases that I don't think kids actually say. I'm trying to see if I can find anything, but whatever. Um, but I think if you're younger and you want to read a, a 
I think if you're like, you know, 23 younger, you'll probably like this book. Unless you like young adult books as an adult. But some of the dialogue might feel like super corny to you. There's like a term, dude. There was a term that Sutter, the main character in this book, always said. It was, you know, he tried to make it like his catchphrase. And it was like every time that it came out, it rang very corny. Uh, the, bo- the movie and the book are different, though. And I, and I think it actually, like, I don't think either is better or worse. I think that, hello, fellow kids. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, that's kind of what it sounds like. I think the, it's a good example of movies can be different than the book because I think people enjoy both mediums differently. Like a young adult book can end sadly and be like, hey, that's just kind of life and this sucks and you got to get your act together. If you don't, it can suck. But in a movie, everyone wants the happy ending, and there's a they they changed some things along the way that fed into it better. But I just wheeled back there and grabbed that real quick. I don't know uh, how many other people have read it, but there's uh, Tim Tharp has some other books. I didn't read any of those. Wonder if he puts the term in the back cover. There was some term, dude, that he says, and I was like, eh, no one says that, man. The movie's good, though. I like it. I like Miles Teller. It's good. He's got rocks in his face because he got in a car accident. That's kind of badass. Whatever. All right. What are you guys doing? I got like eight minutes until I got to bounce. How's everyone doing? Let me uh, tune in to the chats. Two days ago, this uh, show, did I say this yesterday? Had like record views. Like when you combine the four or five places it goes, producer Luke was like, whoa, dude, you should see this. I was like, well, that's crazy. So that's cool. Thank you, everyone. Um, how's Mac doing? Well, he's not in the room, but Dukes is doing good. Uh, yeah, I got to probably talk to Jake and JJR. We decided that we are going to try and create train him. So this was his first night. Sp- st- sp- this was his first night. Spending the night in his crate, so I didn't get any sleep. I He was crying a lot. At 2.30, I moved and just, like, laid next to the crate, and I was like, dude, ah, stop talking. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. So I slept on the floor from 2.30 till 5, and I took him up and took him for a walk. Morning, Chris. How you doing? Um, Going to finish Full Count, then read Baby Bombers. Nice. Full Count, super interesting book. I'm in the middle of uh, Swing Kings, and I'm, I'm going to finish it. Uh, it's uh, it's this really interesting brain twist that I'm in reading this book, Swing Swing Kings by Jared Diamond. That every time every time I turn the page, I'm fascinated and I'm interested, and it's about hitting and and the the, the changes in in hitting in baseball and all the wacky fucking hitting coaches, the independent hitting coaches that that come come along, you know. And it, every time I read a chapter, I'm like, damn, that was so interesting. That's like great knowledge to have. But like, there's part of me that's yearning like, dude, I think I'd rather be reading a history book right now. I think I'd rather be reading, you know, a history book. And my brain's playing tug of war with me. But I'm like 130 pages deep. I think I'm like halfway through Swing King. So I just got to finish it. So anyway, welcome to my brain. Just debating about book reads. What a boring brain. Uh, what's the talk on JJR today? Yeah, I can do that. I can go look at the notes and give you guys a sneak peek of what we're talking about. JJR, we got Chris D'Elia, Aldrich Roses, hit and run, six to eight owners say they don't want a season. Kyrie Irving suggests his Nets teammates that they start a new league. Las Vegas is hosting a pro ball. And then in the weird news, a student was bitten by a fox that chopped its hand. Um, Swiss authorities search for the person who left 200 grand of gold bars on the train, eBay executives sent live cockroaches and a bloody pig mask to a couple. Ugh. Uh, he, to be a tenant is a sin. When you have a landlord, you have lords, says a pastor. Damn. So that's, and then bet of the day, uh, we both lost a bet. Well, I won't, no spoilers. No spoilers on the show. Um, 
Read Man on the Moon by Andrew Chaikin, all about the moon landings. Uh, space is kind of like, I have zero interest in it. I know that is like a weird, very broad statement, but just, I don't know. Um, do you read multiple books simultaneously or just one? Well, I always have like a book of poems that I keep by my bedside because like I've, I've said this a lot, like they're just short stories, basically just snippets, like really bite-sized stories. So if I don't want to like, cause I, cause I hate, I hate closing a book in the middle of a chapter. So if I want to start a chapter, it means I want to finish a chapter. So sometimes I'll switch to like a, like a, I have a big ass book of Bukowski poems right now. And then I'm going to put the Ted Kuzer that I just bought there and that'll be little. So that's like kind of two books at once, right? I have a lot of books that I'm halfway through because we did like, uh, we interviewed the writers of books. And then for uh, laughs from the past, I started books. Like I started rebel yell and I started another one that I haven't, uh, undaunted courage. So like those two, I've read like half and I want to finish them. So usually I don't, um, all right. What else do we got? My favorite McCullough book. Are you gonna be upset with me if I haven't if I haven't read any McCullough books? I'm Googling it. Uh I've read bits and pieces of John Adams. I actually haven't read a lot of a lot of his history books. They're good. He's a good history writer. I really like the way Clavin writes. Uh, I think John Adams is the only one I've read parts of. The Great Journey. What's that? Americans in Paris. Oh. The Pioneers. That's his most latest one. All about sea. The, the heroic settlers who brought the American ideal west. That sounds cool. How long are his books? Can I fit him in my pocket? Oh, 352 pages. That's not bad. That's not bad. Cool. I'll check him out. Um, everything of getting a PO box for fans. We Chad, we like we're halfway through the process, but dealing with the postal service is a fucking nightmare. And then Corona hit and they're like, don't come in anymore. So I don't even know. Like I can ask, I can ask Kate, Katie, where we're at with that. But we wanted to do a P.O. box so we can do like openings or like we wanted people to ask people to draw portraits of Jake and I and the best one we were going to hang in the studio. So we had a lot of fun ideas like that, but I don't know if we can do it anymore. Um, Do more breakdowns. Yeah. Got time today. Today's schedule is morning, JGR, last from the past, and then I think I'm going to make some breakdowns. Um, But yeah. Don't just come into this show and then be like yelling about do more breakdowns over and over again. It's kind of annoying. Uh, how do you do fellow kids? Yeah, that's from that. What's your fave baseball biography? I don't know. Mickey. I'm guessing there's a Yogi one out there that I'm going to like. I like the Ian O'Connor Jeter book. Um, we are all here to talk shit about Manfred. Oh, go to talking baseball. You're in the wrong spot. Go to you go to talking baseball and you hear an hour worth of shit talking about Manfred. Uh, all right, I'm out. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. I appreciate it. This song is by a band called Mona, which is so hard to Google now. They got to be so pissed. See you later. <laughs>